Your money is going down the drain. We've had major crackdowns, shutdowns, impacts on the property market, and prices are tanking. We've had economic downturns, global financial crisis, pandemics, the list goes on. Now, as an investor, you can hear this year in and year out. This law's changing. This thing's going to cause the property market to crash. This government's making a decision over here that's going to impact your life and your cash flows. It's important to get rid of this noise and make sure we have plans in place to deal with these doomsday predictions and to give yourself sleep at night factor to get through these scenarios. I know I've heard about this since I was a teenager. I probably didn't trigger before that point in time. My investing interest started around the ages of 14, 15, 16, as I was one of those people who liked to start businesses, had a lolly stall, tried a clothing brand, tried running my own speaker hire business at some point in my teen years and early 20s. So being involved in businesses at a young age, I always kept my ear to the ground, listening out for my parents and other investors and what the news was saying around the property market. Now we've gone through a GFC, we've had natural disasters, we've had flood issues here in Brisbane and Greater Brisbane over the last 20 years. These events are going to happen and continue to happen, but they're gonna be bumps in the road when it comes to your property investment journey. So the important thing is to take these risks out of play. And so what we're going to talk about today is doomsday prepping for property investors. We're going to run through how you can get comfortable and what I'm doing in my own property portfolio to mitigate these risks and to maximize our returns. The first and most important thing is to run what if analysis to begin with. What if the economy crumbles? What if we have a flood? You can plan outcomes to these events. A great example is floods here in Brisbane. Run your flood checks. Make sure you're comfortable with where your property sits, what the risks are, what you can build on this site, and whether this environmental risk is going to be too much for you in your property investing journey. When it comes to cash flow, how about you run some sensitivity analysis? What happens at a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10% interest rate in my property portfolio journey? And am I going to be tied to my day job if interest rates get around that 7 or 8% mark? What are the impacts on your lifestyle? Can you handle that type of pressure? And do you maybe need to focus on more cash flow rather than capital growth if that suits your risk profile? Everyone's going to have a different risk profile. I'm probably seen as someone that's highly aggressive in their property investing journey. But the difference to me is it's not that aggressive if you understand these risk factors and you understand the approach. One of my best mates thinks property investing is way more risky than I do. And the reason is it's down to the, your understanding, your ability to use your skills and resources in this area of property investing. Now, how can you mitigate these risks? It's being educated. Whether it's paying for property investment courses or buying books or listening to as many free podcasts and YouTube videos as possible, jot down this information. I used to have a big Excel spreadsheet which I took key points out of videos or podcasts that I really liked. And if I go back and look at that, we used a lot of those key points in our property investing journey. So when you get those golden nuggets, write it down somewhere, whether it's a notebook, an Excel spreadsheet, take those golden nuggets over time and use that education to de-risk your property investing journey. Now we've done some what if analysis, you understand the risks at play and you've gotten educated, what do you actually need to do when it comes to property investing? One of the things you can do is diversify, not have all your eggs in one basket. Now I'm very bullish here on the Southeast Queensland market and Greater Brisbane as a whole. We run the buyer's agency here, Purpose Property, specifically in a 35 kilometer ring around Brisbane, because we think as local area experts that we can have an on the ground competitive advantage against other buyers and find the right property for the right price in the right location. So why then wouldn't I put all my money and all my eggs in the Brisbane basket? The reason is diversification is going to de-risk your chance of a major issue or a major crisis affecting your entire property portfolio. And that's exactly why Emily and I purchased the unit block in Coffs Harbour, was to get this diversification spread. We bought a $1.4 million unit block, which had strong cash flow and strong value add potential and growth potential in that major regional market. Rather than having five or $5.5 million of assets in Brisbane, we decided to have around three and a half to $4 million of assets in Brisbane, and then one and a half to $2 million worth of assets in Coffs Harbour at this point in time. And when we look to buy the motel, it may be on the Sunshine Coast, it may be Northern Queensland, it may be Central Queensland, or it may be Northern New South Wales or Mid New South Wales. We have a lot of options along 
Australia's eastern coastline to look for this motel purchase. And again, that's gonna come into that diversification play. This then leads me into asset selection. So we've talked about diversification across different areas, but how about diversification in capital growth and cash flow potential? As Emily and I were building out our multi-million dollar property portfolio, we looked to go for growth first. We focused on capital growth areas, areas that were primed with that short to mid-term growth, as well as that long-term growth potential, and we manufactured value to fast track the journey. Once we build up our base with capital growth properties, we then transition to cash flow assets. Now, this might not be the case for yourself. You might need to start with cash flow properties because you've got a lower price point of entry into the property market, and then eventually look to buy a blue chip asset to balance out your property portfolio. One of the things you can do when it comes to this doomsday prepping or mitigating risks in your property investing journey is find a balance. You probably don't want to go all cash flow because that means you're missing out on the growth potential in your property journey. And you might not want to go all growth. Understand which assets give you more growth and less cash flow and understand which assets give you more cash flow but have less growth potential. This will ensure you're building a balanced portfolio that's going to give you choices over time. Now, a big thing that a lot of investors do is have an emergency buffer. As your property portfolio grows, this buffer is probably going to need to grow as well. I know when we first started, we were comfortable with a five or $10,000 buffer with our first home. That was enough for us. Our expenses were very low. We were very frugal. We were conservative with our money. Yes, we still gave, but we had one car between the two of us, a little 5,000 or probably not even worth that much Holden Barina, which was a 2011 model. And we shared that car for a number of years, three or four or even five years at that point in time before we upgraded our cars. Now in this scenario, your buffer may need to increase. So for us, we started with maybe a five to 10K buffer. When we bought our second and third property, that went to 20 or 30K. And now we're sitting at a six figure buffer in our property portfolio. The reason is as you get to three, four, $5 million of property assets, you might have some bigger bills come up. Um, a recent one for us was we spent $20,000 on the gutters at our unit block in Coffs Harbor. And we're spending around another 20 to $25,000 on some renovations down there. Now, things can and will go wrong. So having those buffers in place gives you the peace of mind, gives you that emergency buffer and protection in case things go wrong. And they can and will go wrong over a longer period of time. So make sure you have that emergency buffer in place. This leads me into another way you can protect yourself, which is insurance. Now, everyone has a different strategy when it comes to insurance. Mine is very simple and I'll keep it short and sweet. We maximize the excess. So in our case, we say we'll pay a $5,000 excess. We make sure we've got adequate coverage and we make sure we minimize that premium cost each year by paying annually. So max the excess, ensure you've got adequate coverage and pay the premium once each year. This means that we've got coverage in the worst case scenario. If our house burns down, if something goes wrong, a major issue, we'll pay $5,000 out of our buffer that we've talked about before and the property can get fixed up. Otherwise, we're minimizing those insurance premiums by maximizing the excess and ensuring we've got adequate cover and not too much or too little cover. So look at that for your own situation. Can you optimize your insurances to enhance your property portfolio journey and give you comfort with your risk profile, ensuring you have that adequate coverage. For some investors, you may also want landlord insurance, but for Emily and I, we pay that out of our emergency buffer. And that's why we've got that six figure buffer at this point in time. You may feel more comfortable paying a landlord insurance premium. It's totally up to you. So look at what suits your circumstance. I know this is a lot of information to try and take in, but it's very important to make sure you're prepped and comfortable when building out your property portfolio. If you don't understand your numbers, understand your risks and how you can mitigate those risks, you may be fearful in taking the next step in your property investing journey. And that's what happens to a lot of Australians. Most Australians are not gonna get past zero or one or even two properties in their investing journey. But if you're looking like most investors that we work with here to build our property portfolio, portfolio between two to five assets, that means you need to be able to get over these fears, mitigate these risks, doomsday prep as the, as the title says, and continue your journey on. If you'd like to increase your education when it comes to property investing, head over to purposeproperty.com.au and click on course. For less than $500, you get over three hours worth of content, breaking down a chronological order of building and investing in a multi-million dollar property portfolio. So if you're interested in that, head over to purposeproperty.com.au. 
Otherwise, drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and click this video over here for more things real estate, renovating, and financial freedom. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.